Hello, this is Stuart Plumbing. Tonight's video, we're going to be going over working with an external subversion repository. And you can view this article on the ADF Development Essentials webpage, specifically part one that goes over installing the Visual SVN application and creating repositories and integrating it with JDeveloper. Please note, I did find a I'm not sure if it's a bug, but I something that's somewhat limiting, and um, I'll show you how to get around that. So let's go over. I've got Visual SVN open, and I have two repositories, App 1 and App 2. I'm going to put Application 1 in here, and later, if I continue, I'd put Application 2 in here. I'm going to take Application 1 and right click on it and copy the URL to clipboard. Then going to JDeveloper, you can see that I have App 1 open and um, just the same uh, Java page that I had for a, a Java file that I had for another application. And here you can see versioning. I'm going to version the application and I'm going to just copy that URL that I had in there. App 1, username is HR. Password is HR, and we'll test it. This has something to do with certificate information on my app on my computer. Um, it isn't impertinent to me. It has something to do with the um, fact that it's SSL. So I'm just going to accept it permanently. Maybe someday I'll try to figure the problem out, and we'll press OK. Then we get to this part. Now you can see here that. Um, I've got it, and um, I've got the trunk here. However, it's only giving me one choice. Um, if we did it, uh, creating a local file directory, a local file repository, and you could create as many as you wanted, you'd see all of the uh, lists there. So let's cancel this out and go over to the system directory, and I'll show you a little hack I discovered. Here's my system directory for the version I have, go in, and we're going to look at the repositories.xml. I'm going to open this with a notepad. In fact, I have to close JDeveloper first. So you can see it changed. So it was obviously being written to. Open with notepad. And here you can see actually the name of my repository. I'm just going to copy and paste this back into it, change this to app2, two, app2, two. and um, unfortunately, because this looks like it's some sort of encryption, I'm going to have to keep that the same. I'd like to be able to change it, but um, I obviously have no idea what the password string should be based if I changed it. So we'll change this, save the changes to it. Okay, we're back in JDeveloper. And I'm going to version the application. And we get this. It's already been created in the previous step. And you can see now that I have these. But I also now have the App 2 available to me. And I can click on that and add to that as far as I've tested so far. Um, that is a hack that I did, and I'm not sure how uh, redundant, or, I'm sorry, robust that hack is. But um, you should be able to create as many repositories as you need, especially when you can do that with a local file disk, a local creation, um, a local, what's the word, sorry, create local repository. You can create as many of those as you need. So let's do the version, and um, I'm just going to put it in the trunk of app one. First import. And you can see these are piles that it will skip and it will do a checkout. And you can see now that there's a revision there. There's a revision here. And if we go over to Visual SVN, you can see that I have the application in here now. And um, you can even take the URL. It's not very great, but you can do this. 
and you can actually look at it in um, HR. HR. There. Branches. Trunk. You can actually look at the file here. And you can see here that that certificate information is screwing this up, but it still, <coughs> excuse me, it still works fine. So that is how to set up a Visual SVN um, source repository and hack it so that you can add each application to its own repository. I hope that's of help to you and I wish you a good evening.